As I drove off, I thought, no, something just isn't right. It wasn't so much of a case of what I could do to help. It was, should I help? Alrighty then, welcome back. It is absolutely belting in the rain and uh, I'm parked up. Well, for the foreseeable future, let me tell you. I learned recently in, in a video that I did maybe a few months ago that no good deed goes unpunished. I had knew the phrase before. It's something that I've kind of kept in my head ever since, that you do a good deed for some, someone and it will come back and possibly bite you in the ass further down the line. So, when one of my customers, I believe, was being financially preyed upon by the neighbour, and she was an elderly customer, it wasn't so much of a case of what I could do to help. It was, should I help? So I'm going to give you the brief uh, rundown on this customer. Like I say, she was an elderly customer, and I started going there maybe five, six years ago, I forget. It was um, half hour away from me, a bit further than I would normally travel, but it was later in the season, and it was just to clear through the garden uh, that she previously had, uh, uh, kind of dropped her or moved on, whatever. So her garden had been touched all year, gave her a price, met her, she was she was fine, and uh, said I'd be able to come through and clear the garden, get it tidy, and then in the spring she could find a local gardener. Perfect, got it done. In the spring then, she phoned up and said she couldn't find anybody locally, really. She was quite housebound, her mobility and, and all that and her age. She said, will you come and maintain the garden? So I said again, it's a little bit out of my way. I said, but what I'll do, um, I'll come after we finish the day's maintenance. I'll drop the lads off, drive the half hour, have a break on the way and then just do the garden. And it's going to be in there every kind of four to six weeks just to, just to keep it down, keep it tidy. And uh, yeah, it was fine. We always kind of turned up, did a good enough job, no hassles at all. Now, at the time... She had carers looking after her and doing her shopping. This was pre-COVID when everything seemed a little bit more normal, I guess. And the carers were able to do her shopping and get taxis arranged and arrange all that for her. She had to go anywhere. Yeah, that went on for quite a while, the maintenance. What I did notice, though, the neighbours were the type of neighbours that um, if I parked in the wrong place, they would definitely tell me I was parked in the wrong place. And it wouldn't matter if I was parked one place one time or one place another time. It would still be in the wrong place. The same with the shared hedges running between the gardens. If I cut all the way across, it was wrong. If I didn't cut all the way across, it was wrong. So I kind of just kept the peace there and, um, yeah, just tried to avoid them. Now, during COVID, I still went there. We used to, like, phone the night before to say we'd be there. I used to tap on the window once we finished and have a brief conversation and she'd always leave the check under a little pot on the window. I'd take it off, i go. Easy. And uh, she'd said that um, her carers had changed. She was finding things a little bit more difficult getting along with the new carers because change is difficult, I think, for kind of... Um, when you get a bit older, I suppose, and you rely on people and get to know people and trust people. And they weren't doing her shopping. And she said to me, she said, oh, the neighbours have come round. Do you want anything doing, any shopping or anything? And she said, yeah, it'd be great if you could do my shopping. And that was that. Carried on. I said, oh, yeah, well done. Nice, nice neighbours. Didn't think much of it. I carried on doing the maintenance... Do you know I mean? Still had conversations, nothing amiss. Anyway, the end of the season came, the next season came, and there was a like a marked difference in her kind of attitude when I asked house things and your neighbours still doing the shopping. She was pretty much like, oh, I was quite surprised how much everything has increased. The cost of food and the cost of that. I was like, yeah, ev everything has gone, stupid prices. Then one time she said that she wasn't happy with how much the neighbours were kind of demanding of her for doing her shopping and coming around and checking on her. And she felt quite kind of controlled by them financially. And I said, well, there must be someone coming around to help you that might be able to do it or might be able to take over. I offered my help, my mother works in the office. I said, listen, if you need anything, just give us a ring. I can't guarantee what I can help you with, but there's someone on the end of the phone who's happy to chat with you and just, if you've got some concerns, let someone know, let us know. And if I can bring anything up, I'll bring something up, all that. So yeah, I knew something wasn't quite right, but was it my place really to go knock it on the neighbours and say what's going on and all that? No, I don't think it was really, but um, yeah, it was in my head. And I chatted to Tash, the wife, about it, said, oh, I've got concerns about this old deer. And uh, she said, well, there's not too much you can do really at the minute. And I kind of agreed. Still belted down. Right, uh, towards the end of the season, then I'd arranged as usual to call gave her a ring the night before, said, I, I'll be around two, three o'clock, and um, yeah, we'll just get it tidy. No worries, she said, look forward to seeing you. I turn up there, and I've barely turned the engine off in the van, and the neighbours come out. The one comes to see me, and the other one stands in front of the, the lady's kind of path up to her house. And um, they come out, and they said, well, he said, she was blocking the path. They said, you're not going to go around there doing her garden. She said, 
she doesn't want you there. And I was like, oh, right. Uh, well, I spoke to her yesterday and she was fine. She was looking forward to see me. You're not coming into her property. You're not doing the garden any longer. Where are you going to do it? And at that point, I was a bit like, hmm, something doesn't feel right. But this guy wasn't going to get pushed out the way. I wasn't going to go pushing him out the way to go and see this this customer. As I drove off, I thought, no, something just isn't right. Should I do something? Should I do something? Should I not do something? And it comes, it comes down to what I said at the beginning then. Do you mean no good deed goes unpunished? What could I do that wouldn't end up putting me in trouble for, for whatever reason? Do I falsely accuse someone? But I knew I wasn't going to because I knew what was going on there. And um, just didn't sit right with me. Just really something eating away at me thinking I should do something. Now, my wife, Tash, used to be a housing manager, and she's seen quite a lot of stuff in her time. So I spoke to her about it, and she knew possibly what she would do if she was working, and it was a welfare issue that she had to do, deal with. She would speak to certain people. So I was like, well, that's not my job. I don't work in a, in a welfare issue. I'm just a gardener, if you know what I mean, that kind of see things and looks out for people. But I felt as kind of a, a, a decent person. I had to try and at least voice what I wanted to say to someone to someone. Tash put me on to who would be the local kind of, um, like a welfare person, community welfare officer, I don't know, along those lines. Finally got through to the person and I explained briefly that I was working on elderly customers' property and I felt that the neighbours were taking financial advantage of it. I didn't know if I should be phoning you, if I shouldn't be phoning you. I just wanted to say it to someone who was kind of in that world and if it do you mean if something happened great yeah i could kind of not forget about it but get it off my conscience does that make sense anyway i explained to her briefly the situation and what i thought was going on and she said what's the property Where, whereabouts and uh is the, what's the customer's name so i told her and instantly she said oh i'm so glad you phoned and it was because she was having messages from the carers pretty much saying the same things. So yeah, she basically said, I'm so glad you phoned and uh, yeah, we think the same thing. I've got my suspicions and let me take your name, address and details in case I need to get back to you and um, I'll take it from there. And that was it. Job was done in my eyes, all done. A couple of months later, then I had a call out the blue and she just wanted to thank me for kind of reiterating or someone else saying the same thing that the carers were so they had a, a kind of a couple of people thinking the same thing and yes it was sorted and that someone would be managing kind of looking after her and her care would have been increased and she was paying for some stuff not paying for other stuff and all the stuff she would need would be provided the garden would be done by one of those local um, care in the community lot which is fine because like i said it was out of my way and it was way underpriced and um yeah so that's it so what would you have done? Would you have gone out of your way and helped? Would you have just not bothered? Is it your job? Like I say, I have really learnt the, the saying that no good deed goes unpunished and I'd go and help anyone do anything. Can you move this pot, this flower pot from here to there? I can't do it, my back's bad. And I'm like, yeah, give me a minute, I'll just come and um, across the road for you or whatever. It's, it's, Jimmy, it's fine, but then people are right. What if I put my back out moving that pot and then I'm out of work? But sometimes you just got to know that you're kind of a human being and people around you sometimes just need help and looking after. And you can't ignore everyone and be like, no, I'm not helping. I'm glad. I'm really glad I helped and uh, I felt like I'd really done something. Yeah, chuck us a, a comment to let me know similar situations you've been in or not. Or would you have helped? Right, that's definitely still raining. So do you want to hear any more? Right, I'll... um. Let you listen to the rain for a second. That's five seconds. Right, bye. Catch you all later. Like the video. Do the subscribe thing. All those wonderful things. Catch ya.